All right, what's going on, Latin Wealth family? Welcome to another episode to the Latin Wealth Podcast. We got Armando and Dean on the podcast today. How are you guys doing? We're good. Living my best life. Feeling good. Feeling good. Can't complain. Can't complain. Living good. All right, so what we wanted to dive into today, we want to dive right into it. Um, I recently posted something on the Latin Wealth page, and it was it's titled A Puerto Rico Without Boricuas. And it's, it says, actor Ishmael Cruz Cordova blames realtors. So essentially what he was doing was he was on Instagram and he was recently expressing his frustration and experience with trying to buy property in Puerto Rico. And uh, for a lot of us that, you know, Dean is living on the island right now. Uh, Armando's lived there before. And a lot of Puerto Ricans on the island know how hard it is it can be to invest in their own um in their own property right so ishmael was on instagram and he recently was talking about how he blames the realtors for them not wanting to work with him but for any other outsiders whether they're coming from great britain whether they're coming from spain or canada or something like that they're more willing to work with those type of people rather than their own so the reason why I wanted to bring this up is I wanted to have this conversation about, you know, the difficulties of investing in Puerto Rico real estate, um, you know, definitely talk about the challenges, but I also want to talk about how we can overcome them, right? I don't ever just want to like talk about the negative. I definitely want to talk about how, what we can do to help our people out and um, how we can overcome this challenge. Um, I think Armando or Dean, whoever wants to start. If yeah, you, you can go on. ahead, Armando. You yeah, I'll go ahead. First, I want to talk about why Puerto Rico is a very, very like uh, in demand area right now. There's, there's like three or four reasons, right? And the first reason is that the property is a very compared. If you compare it to all of the property in the, in the Caribbean, right? The DR, even DR is more expensive. DR, uh, Virgin Islands, all that, I mean Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Dominican Republic, Virgin Islands, everyone in, in the Caribbean is more expensive than Puerto Rico, right? same type of land or same type of property, right? So that's why it's in demand. Two, because of the hurricanes and the political up distress there and the economy, all these things add to why the property is depressed there. Two is that, uh, is that they have unique tax structure there that allows outsiders to come and pay very little U.S., very little taxes for what for their capital gains and passive income, right? So that means in the U.S., you may pay 15, 18, 20% your passive income capital gains. And in Puerto Rico, you pay 4%. It's, only, it's the only true tax loophole for U.S. citizens in the world, right? So that's two. And three is that uh, the Puerto Rico is an up and coming area. So if you if you invest at the bottom of the market, you got a great, great potential of making money on the way up. So it's almost like you get, just going to Puerto Rico, You first of all, you get the cheap property. Uh, you can Airbnb it and make money that way get low, low taxes, ridiculously low tax, and you also have potential, that investment to keep going up in value. So a lot of people are seeing Puerto Rico as a potential place to do these things, start businesses, start, you know, buy property uh, and, and do other things down there because there's a lot of big celebrities like Jake Paul, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of YouTube people, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, crypto people are down there. So a lot of those people, uh, there's a bunch of names that uh, of people that are down there, big names of people that live there. Because they understand that these these three things, right? So uh, there's a lot of people on the island. Some people don't want them there. Some people want them there. But uh, we're going to discuss that later uh, in this podcast. Absolutely. Dean, did you have anything about that? Where, where? It's just that I've seen a lot of um, a lot of uh, finance uh, commercials or channels on YouTube that are talking about uh, what's been going on and how folks are investing and reinvesting into the Puerto Rico overall. And I've seen just the whole aspect of how things are being uh, worked out here in terms of real estate, in terms of buying land to turn into hotels, businesses, properties, all that such. But I'm also taking into consideration how it has affected the locals out mm -hmm. here. And it's just been a lot. It's a lot that goes into it. Um, folks have been pushed out of their homes recently by this um, this one uh, outsider that came in and bought a property and just converted it into his own um, uh, apartment complex and kicked out the locals because they weren't paying enough. And I'm just like, mm. this is a lot 
to take in at the same time, you know? So I'm looking at how, uh, uh, just the whole um, spectrum of how things are working out here and how things have been moving in that direction overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, we were, before we hit record, you're also talking about how a lot of people like on social media or it's like a trend right now to just pack up your stuff and let's move to Puerto Rico with nothing or whatever, just move to Puerto Rico. Right. That are they're right. not Puerto, they're not uh Boricuas, but they're moving there. Right. And taking advantage, like you said, of the tax laws and what Amardo said, how do you feel about that? What, what do the locals uh, in the communities, how do they feel about people doing that? It, it really all depends on who you ask. Um, mm. If you were to ask somebody that uh, believes that this is going to help Puerto Rico in a financial way, then that's, you know, theirs. For me personally, what I feel is that I moved, I left my life behind in New York City. I had mm. a good job there. I had two jobs, you know, working um, a lot. So, and then I just sacrificed it all. And moved out here because I want to reinvest in building the community. I came here with mm-hmm. no job. You know, I didn't come here um, for a tax break. I came more to help mm-hmm. the community rise in any way, shape, or form, whether that's doing community service, whether that's spreading knowledge via my social media platforms and talking about everyday situations that go on within the community. And I see the frustration that goes on where um locals that are being displaced and i want to bring it up with uh bianca graulau her video where she talks about how there are, you know a lot of people that have worked hard to live in a comp- uh, apartment complex in quebradillas and they you know are paying their part and then this um uh, this guy from rhode island who's a non-puerto rican came to live there as well but he was also taking a tax break to he gave everybody a last minute notice saying, listen, you guys are paying too little. Um, you're going to have to move out by the end of the month. This is around like December 31st that they had to move out because um, I'm going to refurbish and change this whole place so that way everybody can pay more. So he was only doing that to benefit his own pocket. And that's what created a lot of frustration. And that's when you get hear a lot of the word um, colonizer get tossed around all that because now people are moving to Puerto Rico for their own benefit and their own, you know, basically for their own benefit, for their own um, personal use. And to, and there, there's a lot of people that are also using it as a trendy way of going about like the video that you mentioned earlier that you brought up where these two, a couple worked a lot and decided to leave their life in New York because they already had their own substantial income where they just bought a property in Puerto Rico, now live in Puerto Rico and um, are taking advantage of living a better lifestyle because they get a tax break out of that. Mm. Yep. And uh, Armando, when you were living in Puerto Rico, did you experience anything like that where you have uh, real estate agents that don't work with Puerto Ricans, they would rather work with other people. Like, did you ever see that discrimination back yeah, then? Or? I mean, uh, just like any other um, oppressed people, uh, they, there's conflicts internally between people. I mean, that's that's part of the the, uh, the oppression, you know, I guess, uh, template that they use, right? Is that mm-hmm. you're going to have internal conflicts. And sometimes uh, some Puerto Ricans feel like that other Puerto Ricans are difficult. So they just mm-hmm. choose not to work with them. So and, and because of uh, because the, the culture, it's a lot easier for me. Like Puerto Ricans negotiate; they're they, you know they're careful with their money, uh, because you know of the, you know the island is in poverty. So uh, a real estate agent may see that situation and say, "Why would I want to deal with someone who's going to negotiate, ask for every little thing, mm-hmm. or whatever?" Because they don't have a lot of money, but I can work for somebody in Europe to just buy stuff sight unseen, right? So they 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 falsely like throw all these like adjectives, I guess, onto the local Puerto Rican people and just say they're all like that. And I'm just going to work with uh, Europeans who have money or bond, bond tight unseen and, and wiring the money off, right? Uh, so the, the, the thing about the outsiders that say uh, Puerto Rican is difficult to buy, Puerto, I, I don't agree with that because I'm going to tell you why. is that It's not difficult, it's just different. Puerto mm-hmm. Rico is, is truly how the mortgage system is supposed to work because in the U.S., they got the government subsidized, subsidizes that. That's why it's so easy to get a house. That's why I can go put 3% down and get a house. If the government didn't subsidize it, it would be just as difficult. 
You were you could you had to put twenty like in Puerto Rico you got to put twenty percent down because the government don't subsidize the mortgage market over there. You know that's that the U.S. government does not subsidize. That means that they don't back up the loans. They don't do all this stuff. So you have to be it's a true mortgage. That means I got to put twenty percent down. I got to have extraordinary credit and I got to have collateral and all this stuff. They have to do the right inspection. So it's way more difficult because that's the true market. It's the same thing in jumbo loans because the U.S. government only like the subsidizes mortgages up to like 500 some thousand, right? So anything above that is the same restrictions as Puerto Rico because it's a true mortgage, right? Is that the bank's 3% is not enough to do a mortgage. But the, because the U.S. government says, look, if anything happens, we're going to insure it. They take 3%. But if you take that government subsidy, subsidize away, that's a, Puerto Rico is a true market. It's not bad. It's not different. It's just different, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why people get, you know, there's a different model over there. It's like, like here, you know, you got two agents, one working on each side of the deal. In Puerto Rico, it's like a car dealership model to where mm -hmm. it's only one agent representing the house. And like, and they, they, they don't, they're not going to work with you because they're going to, the house, the price is the house. The house is three, 400,000. That's the price. You know, you can't, mm -hmm. there's nobody to talk to. It's like, you like a car dealership. I go up there, I can negotiate with the dude that owns the car or runs the, the car dealership. But that's it. It's nobody else to talk to. So people perceive it as being more difficult when it's really not. It's just really a true market. That's all it is. So what do you think are the keys for us to overcome those challenges, right? And you say it's different. Like, What, what are some of the things and the steps that we can take to um, obviously invest back in, in our homeland and whatnot? You got to get your credit up because they're not going to accept those. Like over here, they may accept a 580 for FHA loan, first time home box. Yeah. Like they won't accept that in Puerto Rico. You got to have 700 and something. It's a true, like I said, it's a true market. They're not going to, because it's not insured by the government. They want to make sure they can get their money. So you got to have a job, makes good income. You got to have the records. If you have a, a business, make sure you have the tax records for three years and make sure your credit score is high enough. That's the only way they're going to accept you in Puerto Rico. Right, because they don't have that government insurance to make sure you're gonna pay. Right. You gotta have higher, you got to have more money. Like for FHA loan in the US, I got three percent down and get a house. In Puerto Rico, it's 20%. And you gotta put five percent down just to guarantee you're gonna get the house. So you gotta have a lot more cash. Right. So three steps is make sure your credit's high. Mm -hmm. Make sure if you have a business that you have the the records for the last three years, or if you have a job, make sure you have records of making income the last three years and make sure you have enough capital. With the down payment and the, uh, the escrow down. The now, is that, now, is that for uh, native Puerto Ricans or Puerto Ricans? That's everybody. Native everybody. Puerto Ricans have to do that too. So right. Everybody right. has to do that. Right? Okay. Right. So, homer, owner homeownership is a lot harder in Puerto Rico than the U.S. It's really a lot harder in all the world than the U.S. But it's just that wow. the U.S. were kind of spoiled because uh, the government, like I said, backs up the mortgage system here to a certain level, a certain dollar amount. And we all spoiled and we think that's that's normal. That's not normal. That's normal. Puerto Rico's normal. We're spoiled over here. Mm. Mm. And I, I always encourage mm -hmm. everybody like me, like me, I am of Puerto Rican descent. I'm born and raised in the Bronx, New York. And however, I live out here now, but I don't have the same necessarily income as, as, as I did back in the States. But for those who do live back in the States, I always encourage to reinvest in your hometown, reinvest in where your family comes from, to buy property, to buy land, because it is very crucial that and understandable that land is the most important thing, most valuable thing you can have. Whether you know invest in a in a retirement home, in a country home, or even start your own business out there, that I always encourage Puerto Ricans that left Puerto Rico to always come back to reinvest into land, because the first uh first and second uh, generation or waves. Of Puerto Ricans to New York didn't do that. And eventually that created a lot more spaces and a lot more opportunity for non-Puerto Ricans to buy land, invest in property, to build hotels or golf courts mm -hmm. out there. And then that kind of just faded away. As for the new wave of Puerto Ricans that moved to Florida, moved to other states, they still have a strong connection with their family, with their roots, where they have that same opportunity in a different mindset where they can still invest back into the land, whether that's, you know, uh, any supporting local businesses or even starting a whole coffee farm because coffee is now, um, I hate to say it, but it's now a, it's a now, uh, 
form of economy that's slowly depleting because you have major companies such as Coca-Cola that bought up the coffee mm-hmm. industry. Yeah. They bought up they bought up uh, a lot of the mainstream local Puerto Rican coffee such as Yacono, Alto Grande, Ajuntas, a lot of those. So it's very it's a little bit more difficult mm-hmm. to buy local coffee knowing that it's created in Puerto Rico because it all depends on the package label because a lot of the companies that were bought by Coca-Cola are now getting away by saying made in Puerto Rico when in actuality the company is based in Puerto Rico but they get their coffee from Mexico, Colombia or Brazil ported Mm. over here so there's a lot of tricky ways that a lot of businesses are going about it which is why I always feel that's very crucial for whoever that lives in the states whether you're Puerto Rican descent to help reinvest and rebuild in Puerto Rico too because like what when we talked about in the documentary when you interviewed interviewed uh my boy from the coffee shop that it's something that could slowly die out if not invested mm. properly mm. yeah 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 it makes i remember we had that conversation the last time I was in Puerto Rico Dean you opened my eyes to that like i didn't know that Coca-Cola is doing that right? it goes back to the history i mean the land in Puerto Rico, the coffee and the, uh, the sugar cane also, uh, it goes back 100 years. They, uh, you know, in the early 100, uh, 1900s, the same thing happened is that uh, Puerto Ricans owned all the sugar cane right, in Puerto Rico. And then the corporations came in and bought it all up. Now it's owned by, uh, what's, what's the sugar company there? Uh, Dick, it's not Dixie. What is it? The Yellow Bags. Oh, um. All that it was like sponsored by Dole or something like yeah, that. I don't know what it's, about. It's, uh, it's like the, it's the yellow bags. It's not Dixie. It's uh, uh, it's another brand. Uh, Domino. Domino, yeah, Domino Sugar. I mean, it's Domino. They uh, they bought up in the early 1900s. They 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 used certain tactics, uh, really dirty tactics, and they 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 tricked, bought, or either pushed the Puerto Rican landowners out of their sugarcane plantations, mm-hmm. and uh. And eventually, it was such so bad deals they were giving them that the, work, the people who own the plantations end up working in the plantations, their own plantations, because either they forced them to give it up or they got them, they bought it so cheaply or they like tricked, you know, like just getting, you know, some kind of way got stole it from them that they ended up owning like 90 percent of all the sugar cane in Puerto Rico within years. And it mm-hmm. pushed out all the locals and then all the locals ended up working on the same sugar cane plantations that they own. So yeah. a lot of these things have been going on for a long time. Puerto Rico is in deep history. When I was doing my documentary down there, I didn't know. I read several books to get background on it. I didn't know any of this stuff, right? So I want to encourage people of Puerto Rican descent to do the research on what's been happening there for the last 100, 120 years. It's true. It's true. And no, it's I funny because it. it's mm-hmm. just that I've met so many of us that, not to get off topic, but I just feel mm-hmm. like it's crucial to mention that. I just met so many that have left Puerto Rico or like me that are born and raised outside of Puerto Rico, but, and just have no interest, no, no interest whatsoever to reinvest or to come out to even learn about their own history, their own culture out here. And and I just find it's very sad to say the least that, you know, this is happening till this very day where it's become more difficult to now buy property. Like what you mentioned, uh, with, um, the actor like a Puerto Rican descent that just wanted mm-hmm. to buy a property, buy a house out there and his own people wouldn't even sell it to him, you know? And I think they're just, they're all thinking about the dollar amount of just, you know, yeah. I'll get a better price from somebody if not Puerto Rican descent that can just yeah, buy it yeah. easily, you know, Crazy. they don't realize the impact that it has on the community and how it's affecting us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I just don't like, uh, like he just may have just dealt with the wrong real estate agent. I don't yeah. think they're all like that. No, I think. Uh, I mean, I think he just had a bad experience, and he's like casting it over over the whole island. I don't think that uh, every real estate agent is like that. I think most of them will work with you. Uh, I think that uh, he just had a bad experience. Right? That's what. That's my opinion about that. Yeah. He, he, but didn't he say it was like going on for like a year or something like that, or even yeah? Like- but then, I mean, you know, Porter. I mean, that's the thing about it. If you don't understand Puerto Rico. That's true. Then people, if like if I throw, have you ever been to Puerto Rico, Chris? Yeah. If I put you in Puerto Rico, everything's more difficult. <laughs> it's just how it is. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's because of the, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of underlying reasons, for it, but everything is more, everything. Even something simple like getting a car inspection may take you all day. 
<laughs> no, and I don't think people that and you know that you know that, and it's just that's how it is there. It's because of you know, the poverty, but what's happened in the past. It's a lot of underlying reasons for that. But every even going to like you go go to the more the movies, it's gonna, it's gonna have a long line there. You know, you're gonna have to spend time. Everything costs more time, money, everything in Puerto Rico, and I think that maybe he just. Maybe I don't know how much experience he has with Puerto Rico. And sometimes people don't realize that that's just how business is done down there. You know, and, and they they're like casting on all. You know, it may take you a year to buy a house in Puerto Rico, literally, because of the you may you may send some paperwork, it disappears for two months. You may that's just how it is there. You know, you may have to go back to the bank several times. They may have to send an inspector a month from now. It may yeah. take a month to do. It may something that takes a month in the U.S. may take a year in Puerto Rico. Yeah, no, so he no, that's that one and, and, that, and that's the reality because I like check this out. I got into a car accident um November of 2020, and I didn't get approved for that insurance until months after, until like maybe March. And it is I had to wait a couple months just so they would deny me the insurance of my car to help repair my car. So that being said, I had to pay out of pocket and they misread how the accident went. I'm not going to get too much into it, but needless mm -hmm. to say that it was poorly handled and that it took a longer than necessary process just so I can get a no, I'm not going to get the payment to fix my car whatsoever. Even when it comes to jobs out here, it's a whole different culture shock. Indeed doesn't work out here. Mm -hmm. You need to no. use Facebook market or classificados, mm. or you got to know somebody to help mm. you get into the into the job or line of career, whatever you want to do out here. Because yeah. if I go to send my resume old school way back in New York to whatever job in New York, there's a chance that I'll get a call back or I'll get a no whatsoever. Here, if I use that same mindset here in Puerto Rico to try to apply for a job, to get a house, it's a whole different ball game where it mm -hmm. might take longer just to get a no, or I just might never get a call back whatsoever. So it really, it's about playing your cards and it's about who, you know, and it's about using what's trending out here and what's beneficial out here. I had to find out that Facebook market and classificados were the best tools to get a job out here and to get a car out here. Mm. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this, man. I'll tell you this is that people hear all these things. And I don't want to discourage anybody. And I'm going to tell you right, why right. it's because, in the early, from 2000 to 2010, one of the biggest investments that people made, and it was like, it was like 18% a year, I think. I may be wrong, but I think it was, was they invested in China. China mm -hmm. was an emerging market. China was coming to its own. China was, in, in 2000, China was mostly, uh, in the late 90s, most of China was in deep poverty. By mm -hmm. the 2010, 15, there was skyscrapers and stuff all over the place. It was an emerging superpower. So now the thing about it is that we hear these problems. Puerto Rico is inefficient. There's problems going on. But that's when you invest in something. You know, mm -hmm. if we sit there and wait until everything's perfect, the price is going to be too high. Right. So right. you may have to deal with some, you may have to deal with some inefficient work. You may have to deal with waiting for your paperwork too long. You may have yeah. to deal with some yeah. more touch points, bad, with all this stuff. But when the property values do recover, you're already in at a great rate. And you're going to make a lot more money instead of waiting for everything to be perfect, right? Like crypto, the best gains came when crypto was hard, when you had to create your own wallet and code, when you had to meet people in the street to buy crypto. All that, that was difficult back then. Most people didn't want to do it, but that's when the people got in at 10, 15, 50, $100, they made all the money. You see what I'm saying? The same thing with Puerto Rico, when it's difficult is when you should get in, right? Mm -hmm. And there's like, like I said, because of everything that's happening in Puerto Rico, because people know it's that the government knows it's difficult, they've even like set certain places in Puerto Rico's opportunity zone. Mm -hmm. So you can buy land in Puerto Rico in these opportunity zones and you can defer all U.S. taxes for eight years. <laughs> all to like you can set up an Airbnb there and never pay taxes for eight years if they're in certain areas because people they understand that Puerto Rico's in distress, the U.S. government does, and they're willing to help you give you grants and stuff like that because you're investing in this place that's, I, I believe, is emerging. It's coming back to, to be one of, you know, a great country again. It's, a, like, it's an just, emerging, emerging place. I feel, you, I feel you. I just feel like we have a lot more to pick up on, like, with what you're saying. I agree. Like, I feel like there's a lot more that it just takes time. And I just hope that, you know, I could see a Puerto Rico with Puerto Ricans 
becoming the best version of Puerto Rico has yet to become. That's all I really want. That being said, I really hope that, you know, Hey, this and this is just me. This is just me. Like I just really wish that you know the same way all these you know the outsiders that come in here to get a tax break. If you're gonna do the tax break, then give the locals a tax break. Don't like choke them so hard with having them pay all the taxes, with having them have to pay out of pocket for all these things that are making have been a little bit more easier for non weekends to come in and invest in. I just wish it was just a little bit more uh, so accessible. For, so I, for want explain, I want to explain Instead what you're point. talking about. What, you, what uh, Dean is talking about right now, he's talking about the Act 22 law. So the right. Act 22 law was created uh, for, for the, it was created, it was written, bam, see. It was created with the intent to bring new investment from outside the Holland. So basically what happens is that if I don't live in Puerto Rico, I'm willing to live there half the year, 80, 183 days. I get a 4% corporate tax rate for uh, for any companies I start in Puerto Rico, a 0% tax on capital gains and dividends. I have to go and get a tax decree uh, from Puerto Rico. Once I get that, I, I get those tax benefits. So uh, what Dean is talking about is that there's, there's a problem, like Puerto Ricans that, local Puerto Ricans are a little bit angry because they feel like they got to pay all the taxes for these new people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, and and it actually was, it was just written badly, I think. So they just rushed it to try to get uh, people to come to the island and invest in the island. But I, I think it's a good a good law. It just was written badly. And it should apply to Puerto Ricans too who start businesses there also in some kind of way. But it was, the original intent of it was to bring in outside money though. But it was, I think it was just executed bad. Right, mm -hmm. right. I, I, that's. I just feel that. I feel, that. and I feel that now. And the thing is, like with um, with what uh, Chris mentioned earlier, that the Puerto Rico without Puerto Ricans, and the sad reality that who said that was one of the governors of Puerto Rico at some point too. That mm -hmm. he envisioned that he doesn't want people like us investing back in our land. He doesn't want us to. Yeah. He doesn't want to see us thrive. He's selling us out, basically. He's he's basically selling us out. I don't think that's fair. And then his his political party are the ones that approved for this to happen, giving non Ricans the opportunity to thrive and to have like a backyard home, a backyard beach, and stuff. But he doesn't realize the damage that it's having on his own people and the mm -hmm. damage that it's have, having on people in the neighborhood. Me personally, like I see what goes on and I only try to inform as much as I can, but I can only speak so much on this topic because, you know, granted, I can't say I have um, a steady income because I don't, but if I were to invest and to buy a property, I would want, you know, what's best, what's best for me, what's best for my interest too. So I think it's just a little bit unfair that if I use my New York license to invest here or to, you know, whether that's property, business, that I don't think it's fair that I would have an easier way or um, a better profit to go about it than somebody who was born and raised here, you know? How you feel about that, Armando? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, like I said, is that uh, I think that uh, Puerto, Puerto Rico, it should be some kind of tax structure to also help locals. Yeah. But, uh, I believe I believe it should be, but I just don't know how to go about it. Yeah, like I said, right. the, the original tax laws were meant to bring in outside money. So, uh, and and I, I don't think and it's not working. To be honest, it's not working like they thought because what's happening, mm -hmm. the people that are coming are not really starting corporations and businesses. They're like people like Jake Paul. He comes by a house, yeah. it's all his YouTube revenue money, and just sends it outside the country. You know, so he's not like it's like he's. A, Jake Paul, I think it's Jake Paul. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's both of them. It's, it's uh, Logan and Jake. Yeah, yeah, so they live in Puerto Rico now. They don't have, they got like some staff and maids and stuff and that, whatever. But it's just basically them four, three or four that are running all of it. So they're not like hiring people. Like that's what it was meant for. They're not hiring yeah. people. They're not creating a corporation. They're not creating jobs. They're just taking the money, they're just getting the money from YouTube and all their other stuff, right. getting a low tax rate and sending it back to U.S. bank accounts. That's it. Yeah, and who, and so, who knows if they're actually staying there for half the year, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's hard <laughs> like not to do that, but they, they, there's, there's theories that some of them don't. There's theories that some of them do, but they, they said that they're real particular on that. They will check the manifest of the planes no, and stuff. Okay. That's, okay. What I, that's what a lawyer told me. I'm not sure. But uh, because I thought the same thing, I was like, man, they could just who's gonna tell? But he, the lawyer told me today we'll check that. But I'm not sure if it, it you know, that's that's what I heard. I'm not sure if they are or not. 
but they can spend half the year out, out outside the island. That's not mm-hmm. bad, you know. That means two weeks a, a month you can be elsewhere. Yeah. So we had a, a question on the the Latin Wealth page. You know, someone asked, "Have you started? Have you considered starting an investment group? Maybe we can buy land and build properties together." What do you What are your thoughts about that? How difficult is that? Um, well, yeah. you can do a, a, a co- I think it's a cooperative, or you can do a real estate investment trust. I actually thought about it. Mm-hmm. Real estate investment trust, but you'd have to do it the right way. And if people buy into the trust uh, in like percentages. And then you would buy land in Puerto Rico. Then you would, uh, you know, you would, uh, you, any, all the profits would be sent back to people who bought into that trust. Yeah, but uh, that would require, you know, go ahead. And I was going to say, it gets really tricky though, because there's, I don't want to say his name, but there's another big entrepreneur that was trying to do I, that. In I know Tulsa. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it gets and, uh, really like tricky. He, he wrote the, uh, the SEC documents the wrong way. I mean, so he basically... Mm-hmm. Uh, it was basically a profit. He just was getting profit for himself. That's all he wanted. Because like, I think I know what you're talking about. So he yeah. wrote the SEC documents, which you have to register in order to do something like that, in a way that he was basically getting half the money that there was investment. And, and people got mad behind it. Is that the same person? I think it is, yeah. Yeah, so he wrote the... So when I write a real estate investment trust document, I can put in there whatever I want. I can say, people are going to donate a million dollars to me, and me and Chris and Dean are going to spend half of it on on our own houses. Uh, we need a place to live in Puerto Rico. We need cars. So we can spend half the money on that to say, well, the other half is going to be put in real estate. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's legal because I, I, I disclosed it. And oh. a lot of people didn't read those documents. So, mm-hmm. you know, he was all online. So talking, so they invested into him thinking, you know, the average person doesn't know that they think if I'm giving you $10. I'm going to get back to $11 next year. You know, they didn't, mm-hmm. he didn't structure it like that. He, he actually disclosed it. He said, this mm-hmm. is what I'm going to do with the money. Nobody checked though. <laughs> so, oh, I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how people <laughs> got to be careful about uh, investments because you have to do your research. You can't just, somebody, if I tell you, Chris, man, invest in this, you can't take my word for it. You got to look at look into it yourself because yeah. he didn't do anything illegal. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It may have been immoral, may have been misleading, but he didn't do, he's not going to jail for that because he disclosed it, told you what I'm yeah. doing with the money. Yeah. But people just didn't pay it, didn't, didn't research it. Like you said, it, it's not illegal, but it's it's pretty unethical what he did. It's right? Unethical. Yeah. <laughs> He's it's more, it's more like I don't even know if it's unethical, but it's misleading. I should say. Okay. It's very okay. very misleading. Yeah. Very misleading. So, I mean, we definitely wanted to have this conversation and discussion. You guys brought up some really good points. Um, you know, one of the things I would love to see more is, like you said, Armando. Not every real estate agent out there is bad. You know, it could have been a bad experience that the actor had. Um, but that's why I would love for us to come together in this Latin wealth community and continue to communicate with with one another. Because when I posted that, there were some people that were saying, yeah, I've had bad experiences, but there was a lot of people saying like, yo, I'm a good person. I'm a good real estate agent. Like if you need something, come to me. So the the reason why I bring that up is because I want us to come together and use our resources and lean on one another. Right. Um, so if we do have somebody that's looking to buy a property, uh, like Ishmael, the actor, he could have came to the Latin wealth community and we have a a line of realtors that he can work with. Right. So that's what we want to do. We want to build this thing up and we want to help each other and lean on one another. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, did you guys have anything else about this topic in specific? We covered a lot. Um, yeah. Well, I was, I wanted to, I don't know if I'm wondering, you were planning on um, like showing on um, what you had lined up that you showed us before we went live. I, I was, I was curious if you were going to show that at some point too. Yeah. Man, I, I, I hit the, I hit the main points when we were talking this, you know, uh, this is going to be mostly audio, so I don't want to show anything visual. Mm-hmm. Uh, gotcha. I hit the main points though. So the main points really I, I wanted to talk about was uh was that poor, I wanted to tell you Puerto Rico is the most uh is is one of the cheapest real estates. It is the cheapest real estate in all the Caribbean, right? If we look at, I'll give you a good example. Uh, here's some numbers just so you guys know. Uh, Caribbean real estate by meter by square meter right now Bermuda is seven thousand roughly a square meter. Bahamas is thirty six hundred dollars a square meter. U.S. Virgin Islands is thirty two hundred. Dominican Republic is around 2,000 per square meter of land. Puerto Rico is roughly 1,000 mm. right now. That tells you, so Bermuda is seven times more expensive than Puerto Rico land. 
right? Mm. Uh, second thing is that uh, I want to talk about is that uh, the, the the real estate agents in Puerto Rico, the real estate industry is not the same. And you have to understand that going into it. Maybe it's going to be more difficult because it really is a true market. That's the way it's supposed it was, it was It was the U.S. real estate mortgage market was like that until like the 80s, 70s and 80s when the U.S. government started pushing mortgages and insuring it. But that's how it used to be. Used to have to, you know, come up with big down payments and get a, go through a lot of scrutinization to be able to buy it, right? Uh, so you have to do your homework and you have to do a lot more work when you. Puerto Rico also is a one agent on the car dealership model market, which means that the agent represents the house, and it's only one. You don't have one representing your side of things. So you got to do your more. You got to do your homework and know what you're talking about because the agent works for the the owner, and that's it. And I don't have an agent on my side in Puerto. So you have to do your own and you have to make sure that, that you know the steps, getting the inspector and stuff like that. Uh, so in the last thing is just talking about the Act 22 and how that can benefit a lot of people going in there and also opportunity zones, which are places in Puerto Rico where you can buy real estate and get like a you no know, no taxes for eight to 10 years. So it's just those four things I want to hit. Mm, that's that's basically basic points of that presentation I showed you earlier. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Good information for you guys out there. Um, like I said, we want to continue to lean on each other and use our resources to help each other out. Uh, if you guys don't have anything else, we can close this thing up. Um, comment and like and share this this podcast with somebody that needs to hear this episode. Uh, with that being said, it's your boy Chris, and we're out. Peace. All right, see you guys later.